The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of puck talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy and as always, go Canucks, go. You know what, Kyle? There was a reporter yesterday that said, quote, everyone wants to play the Vancouver Canucks. Well, what? be careful what you wish for. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, 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 good morning, good afternoon, who knows what you're listening, but anyways, welcome <laughs> to another episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, co-host of Locked On Canucks, and also a Canucks writer since 2013, currently with Daily Hive Vancouver. Before we dive into today's episode, celebrating your Vancouver Canucks, we got to thank you for tuning in to Locked On Canucks because guess what? It is your Canucks every damn day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you go subscribe, follow us, like the show, or leave us a five-star review, and uh, I'll come to your house and give you a, a big old hug, okay? Because that's what everyone wants, a hug from a scrawny white boy. Hey. Um, before we get into the show today, we got to let you know today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download that Game Time app. Create an account and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. The last time the Canucks won a division title, I hadn't even gone through puberty yet. Okay, that's not quite true, I don't think, but it's been a <laughs> long time, and the Canucks officially locked up the division last night against the Calgary Flames. And I don't think that was a huge surprise, but they showed something in that game uh that you know did catch Kyle and I's attention. That was their team toughness. And uh-huh. I think that's something that's been slightly questioned. Again, there was a quote yesterday that everyone wants to play the Vancouver Canucks. It was who from, said this? Uh, who said this? It was Ir- Irfan Gaffar. Uh, no way, dude. <laughs> this guy always Thought chirping us. the Canucks, man. He's always yeah, chirping the Canucks. Stir in the pot, stir in the pot, stir in the pot, yeah. stir in the pot. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about you know what we like about the Canucks heading to the playoffs, and specifically, are they tough enough to go all the way uh, in the playoffs? We'll also look at the oppositions one more time because as we're recording right now. The Canucks still have three potential oppositions. Now, everyone's saying it's most likely going to be Nashville, but we're going to break down the scenarios and look at the numbers in terms of who should the Canucks be facing off against because everyone thinks it's Nashville, but I'm not sure if that's automatic. Uh, we'll also talk about the Canucks trophy watch because, you know, the Norris, the Jack Adams, uh, the Vesna, there's still uh, some Canucks in the running for some major award. We're going to touch on all that and more before we get to that. I got to introduce my co host, Kyle Bowen. Did the morning commute today over the Oak Street Bridge. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Straight up, man. Yo, we've come a long way. You know, when we started the show, it was 4.20 p.m., right? Every day, 4.20 p.m. <laughs> then we moved it to lunchtime, and now we're at 8 o'clock in the morning moving forward. Yeah, we're maturing uh, before your eyes and your ears. Straight up. But we're going to stay the same. We really are, okay? You're Vancouver Canucks Pacific Division champions. Uh, we're going into the playoffs. That means uh, Trevor and I are going to be full of swagger, and our egos are going to be through the roof. AKA, we're going to be really leaning into this West Coast bias, a bias that is, you know, ingrained here at the Don't Dose Art Lab, uh, the place that helps produce the show, Locked on Canucks. Hit the like button and subscribe. And man, oh man, like I said, 10 seconds ago, the playoffs just around the corner. And uh, before we get into everything, everything related with the uh, team toughness surrounding your Vancouver Canucks, because I think it's a very notable trait that this team has. I feel as if week in and week out, game in and game out, this team has proven that they don't back down, that they will lay the body, that they will stand up for each other. Before we get into all that, I got to say this too, okay? Is Elliot Friedman going to be wrong again about your Vancouver Canucks, okay? He's telling everyone a couple days ago uh, that the Canucks are probably going to play on Tuesday, April the 23rd, to start their journey to June. And yesterday, there was a rumor that the Canucks could actually start on Sunday, April the 21st. And I'm curious, because if, if Elliot Friedman is wrong again, I hope this is a warning to all us, okay? All of us here on the West Coast, the best coast of Canada, to take Elliot's word for, uh, like, what's thinner than a grain of salt? You know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel as if all season, this guy's been trolling us, man. You know what I'm saying? He's been trolling us, man. Just getting us going. Yeah, seriously. And, uh, you know, shout out to Patrick Johnson from the province yesterday, who was doing some more reporting on this situation. He suggested that, you know, according to his sources, the playoffs might start on for the Canucks on Sunday, uh, April 21st. Uh, man, oh, man, you know, it's i uh, I'm a family man. I got my plans that day, but everything's going to change if game one uh, for the, your Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> You're not going to play catch with your son. You're not going to play catch with your son on Sunday. 
Well, it's, it's funny. I'm actually going to some friend's house and actually they, they have a beautiful new house. I think they have a theater room, but they're not really Canucks fans. I know they'll throw in the game for me though. 100%. Okay, there you go. It's not the, not the end beautiful. of the world, but uh, you know, Kyle, in, in some way, shape or form, I, I, I want to be, uh, I want to be hugging you when uh, okay. TD scores an overtime goal for the Vancouver Canucks, but we'll, we'll figure that out at a later day. Um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to some playoff hugs, but one thing that got me excited based on the game last night was the team toughness the Canucks showed mm-hmm. and, and specifically the smaller guys on the team. And, We've talked a lot this season about you know Nils Hoagland or Connor Garland, their contributions to the team despite you know, being smaller guys, and, and even Quinn Hughes to an extent. Mm-hmm. All those guys were kind of in, in, uh, in the middle of things last night. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of surprise you, and, and did that say anything to you about like what we could see from the Canucks here as the postseason is around the corner? You know what? It really didn't surprise me because, again, all season long, I'm talking from the jump. You know, there was a fight in game one, too. Remember, Dakota Joshua dropping it with, I think, that Desjardins guy or the Oilers. Anyways, I, I think just, uh, again, your Canucks all season long have proven to not be a soft team. And it comes at a bit of a surprise only because I don't know if I could say the same about this team 12 months ago or 14 months ago, you know, but everything changed, you know. Uh, before Rick Tocca got here, all we had was Luke Shen. You know what I'm saying? But then Rick Tockett got here. Uh, you know, just that energy that Rick Tockett uh, should be Hall of Fame t- famer type of energy gets into the building. Uh, look at the way he played. It kind of bleeds into the, the, the rest of the team. And then look at what they did in the offseason. Straight up, Ian Cole, Carson Soucy, Nikita Zadorov. Pretty much in the offseason. You know what I'm saying? It kind of changed everything. And I also think what changed everything was this feeling around the room that it was possible to be cool for it to be cool to be a Vancouver Canuck, AKA the camaraderie went all the way up. And when you're playing for one another and you're a true bro for that guy right next to you in the dressing room, uh, the overall team toughest level raises. And yeah, we saw it in spurts yesterday, right? All the small guys getting into the action. Hey, speaking of the small guys. Yeah. I want to show a lot of love for Connor Garland, but let's be honest and let's be real. Niels Hoaglander is probably the toughest pound for pound guy on this team. He's always in the mix. Always in the mix. Yeah. He is not afraid. And I want to ask you this question, okay? Because I think they asked Rick Talkett this question as well. And we got a comment on the post-game show last night about this as well. Do you want Niels Hoaglander to potentially tone it down going into the playoffs when it comes to him constantly looking to attract any type of physicality, okay? I'm talking during the game, post-whistle. Uh, This guy's a POS to play against. He's a a thorn, shift in and shift out. Uh, Do you want him to, uh, again, just potentially tone that down for the sake of, I don't know, staying focused on being on the ice slash potentially not taking penalties? Because I don't. Yeah, not a chance. Not a chance. And and I think for a lot of guys, that's how they get themselves into the game. And I think we've seen this more from Hooglander over the second half of the season here. Uh, and not to say he wasn't tough before, especially I think I noticed it during um, his time in the AHL last year as well. Um, mm-hmm. The guy does love to be involved in the mix. And I've noticed it more in the latter half of the season here with him playing alongside Pedersen. The guy's throwing the body more. Um, I think it was that goal against Vegas in the game where we got blown out where, you know, Vegas is the puck. Hugliner throws the body, forces a turnover, and the Canucks ended up scoring. It's plays like that mm-hmm. uh, which make Hugliner so valuable. Not only is he, you know, a, a quasi wizard with the puck on his stick. Um, but I think his physical game is underrated. And we saw that last night. Another interesting thing about Nils Hoaglander is, you know, from, from being in scrums with him, he's a pretty quiet dude. And yeah, yeah. it's a bit different. You got a bunch of microphones shoved in your face. Um, but like I'm watching him beak off against uh, Rasmus Anderson la- last night. And I'm like, I don't know if I've ever seen this guy talk that much before, man. <laughs> dude, come on, man. I know it, it takes a lot for him to uh, explode. You know, it really does. And that's another reason why I think I don't want him to tone it down because I'm pretty sure he's disciplined in that regard, right? He's going to mm-hmm. leave it from whistle to whistle. He's going to get under your skin. And if there's any penalties being called because of the actions of Niels Hoagland, it's going to be against the other team for some sort of retaliation, a.k.a. Uh, similar to what we saw Rasmussen do. Uh, what's his name? Rasmus Anderson. Yeah, Rasmus Anderson, my bad. I know I said that wrong. He's a really good player, by the way. Uh, that being said, uh, what a douchebag move for DT. He, he DDT'd Niels Hoaglander with like a minute left in the game. You know what I'm saying? That was dirty. That was dirty, but it's so fun to see. I cannot wait for Canucks fans to witness Niels Hoaglander shift in and shift out. Now, 
let's move on to the taller players, the bigger players on this team. Like, how much does how much do guys like Carson Susi and Ian Cole and Nikita Zadorov? How much do they deserve when it comes to the credit given to again the culture change in Vancouver? Because it wasn't that long ago where people could take runs at Pedersen, people could take runs at Quinn Hughes, and the only guy—I'm not even joking—the only guy that would step up for those guys would be Luke Shen. That's what it seemed like. But now I feel as if everyone is standing up for each other. Yeah, and I, I'm going to give big credit to uh, Alvina Rutherford on this one. I mean, look at what they've done with the defense. And every day, you know, we've talked about it before. But, you know, late last season, it was Akino Hirose, Guillaume Brizwa, Christian Willanen, you know, and Cole McWard, like all the Kyle Burrows. All the, and Kyle Burrows is a tough guy. But, you know, it was it was such a... A crappy defense last year. And now look at it now with Hughes and Hronik on the top pair. And then you got four big boys uh, in Cole, Susie, Zadorov, and Myers. And not to mention Juleson as well. Juleson is a tough customer too. I mean, the overhaul in this defense has been probably the most drastic change with this team over the past 12 months. Not even only the overhaul in personnel, but the overhaul in style as well. Yeah. Um, and, and I will say, Kyle, of that bunch, I don't know if any Canuck has increased his stock over the latter half of the season here more than Nikita Zadorov. And I think, Ooh. you know, the odds of him sticking around are, are slim. We've talked about it before. The, get, the guy's going to command some big bucks. Um, but man, oh man, mm -hmm. he is a, a unique player and it's such a tough guy to play against. Sometimes mm -hmm. he knocks down guys with these crazy hits he doesn't really even mean to, right? <laughs> yeah, no, he's a, he's a fun player to watch. And again, from afar, it seems like it's impossible for him to stick around. But maybe a guy like Noah Juleson can learn a thing or two from Nikita Zadorov. Real talk. There's going to be an opportunity there for Z uh, Noah Juleson to be an everydayer in the NHL in the near future. Uh, let's talk more about, again, uh, this season, though, and, and specifically to players playing bigger, playing more tough. And there's another player I want to mention that doesn't or isn't involved in, like, big hits, but it's his approach to his game that is so different from years past. And that's Brock Besser. Another guy who's raised the floor in regards to his toughness. Like I see the way he plays and he kind of reminds me of how Pedersen was playing prior to this season. I mean, Pedersen's still a tough player and he's still going hard, but there's a different motor in Brock Besser's game right now. The way he engages in physical contact, the way he wins board battles. I think team toughness isn't just a indictment or whatever the word is on laying laying the body getting into scrums it's establishing a presence along the boards and winning 50 50 puck battles and brock Besser just elevated in that regard and those little things again lead me to believe that even though the vancouver canucks are lacking a ton of overall playoff experience even though they're lacking that i feel as if their ability to again be proud to be members of the vancouver canucks and be led by guys like adam foot and Rick Tockett, yeah. give me a lot of confidence that their toughness, their their strength, their grittiness is going to push them forward in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Oh, man, you just you sent a tingle up my spine, man. I can't wait for playoff hockey. And no, I think you make a good point on Besser. It's easily been his most impressive season in the NHL by far. And it's not just the goals. It's, it's the overall game. The defensive side of the game has truly impressed me this season. Um, but yeah, I, I do think... You, know, you mentioned Adam Foote. I think this coaching staff potentially can make up for some of the lack of playoff experience on the squad because there you got so many guys behind the bench that have been there before. I think that can give the guys confidence that, hey, you know, we're with a staff that mm -hmm. really knows what they're talking about. And I think there's a lot of trust, not only between the players on the bench, but between the players and the coaching staff as well. Uh, I'll mention uh, one more thing on team toughness too uh, before we cut to break. Uh, I know Hits isn't the biggest... Um, uh, the be all end all when it comes to team toughness, but I found it interesting that the Canucks right now fourth overall in hits this season. They're going to finish fourth because uh, mm -hmm. Nash was in fifth with a couple less hits, but their season's done. Uh, it's funny because when we think about the Canucks in the Michael Delzato era, right? It was like, oh man, this, this team had so many hits because they never had the puck. But look at the league leaders in hits this season it's Florida, Boston, Toronto, Vancouver, mm -hmm. Nashville, the New York Islanders, Philly, the Vegas Golden Knights. Those are your top eight. And seven of those eight teams are in the postseason. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, some of the teams at the bottom, the two teams at the bottom are Dallas and Carolina. So, I mean, it's not like you have to hit. 
But um, it's interesting to see that, you know, a lot of playoff teams are actually among the league leaders in hits. And one thing mm-hmm. I like about the Canucks in terms of them being up there in hits is that they're still bottom half of the league in terms of minor penalties. And I know we talked about Ooh. some of the guys in the defense taking minor penalties, but if you can be tough, if you can rattle the opposition with a, with a hit and not take too many penalties, that's a great sweet spot. And I think the Canucks have hit that so far this season. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, I know that Dallas and Carolina are at the bottom of that statistic, but man, oh man, going into the playoffs, seeing how the Canucks again have risen as far as being a strong team, a tough team. And more specifically speaking, if you just want to go to the eye test, Man, oh man, how many big hits have we seen this year? How many big hits have we seen this year? It's It's been 10 times uh, the amount that we saw in years past. Like This is a strong team, an intimidating team. We waited 15 minutes uh, in this first segment to use that word. I truly do believe that the Canucks are going to surprise a bunch of their Western Conference opponents when it comes to how intimidating and scary this team is. A team that lacks playoff experience collectively, but man, oh man, right now it's... It means a lot for these guys to be members of the Vancouver Canucks. So we'll talk more about that on the other side. You're listening to Locked on Canucks. Hit the like button and subscribe. We'll get to your comments too, man. You guys are going off this morning, a new edition of this show called Locked on Canucks. Uh, Begsy, who are we shouting out? All right. uh, With the playoffs on the horizon, you know we got to shout out game time. All right. You know the deal, baby. If you're looking for, I don't want to call it cheap Canucks tickets for the playoffs, but You know, tickets from a a site that gives a lowest price guarantee. Let me say that again. A lowest price guarantee. You know, you got to use game time. Okay, baby. Game time. You know, I've had a good relationship with game time for years. And it all started when Nicole from game time started emailing me on a weekly basis, always teasing me with tickets for Canucks and other concerts and events in my area. Not only are those weekly emails a tease, but yeah, I learned that. Game time has event protection cancellation and again a lowest price guarantee. It doesn't get any better than that, baby. And you know, mm-hmm. if you're looking to, you know, impress your significant other with tickets for something other than the Canucks, you know, they got tickets for concerts, basketball, baseball, theater, comedy, and more. You can find it all on Game Time. So make sure that you, you know, take the guess we're gonna buy tickets with Game Time. Go download that Game Time app, create an account, and use code locked on NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply, create an account and redeem code locked on NHL for 20 bucks off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. People, people, we back doing this, talking about your Vancouver Canucks on this morning. This morning in April, when the sun is shining and the Vancouver Canucks are about to play game 82 tomorrow and then take their talents to the Stanley Cup playoffs, uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is <laughs> your life is back to feeling like it's normal again. Straight up. Straight up. Speaking about you and you and you and you guys going off in the comments, uh, look at this comment from Anthemus. Okay, the last few games, Patterson has been throwing these backward hits. I think Andrew said something similar too. Patterson has been hitting all year. You know, I made that comment in regards to Brock Besser and comparing his work rate to Pedersen's work rate in the past. It wasn't me taking a shot at Pedersen. It was just me me asking myself this question, right? Like, I think shift in and shift out, I've just seen more consistency in the work rate from Brock Besser. And I'm not – it's not a shot against Pedersen again. It's just – it just speaks for the culture of this team, you know? I I think prior to the season, we dropped that episode, right? Oh, the Canucks are going to win the Stanley Cup this year. And Trevor said something really interesting – in that episode, I think he a said he would take Patterson over Hughes, and then B he said there's not a harder working player on this roster than Elias Patterson. And you know, for years prior to this one, Patterson, our most skilled player, our best player, working the hardest, and going to this season, I feel as if everyone kind of adopted that. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, your work rate has to be all the way up, straight up. Now on Patterson's behalf, I got to say this. You know, we're going into game 82, still a lot on the line. Well, we have to, you know, talk about the playoff predicament and who we're going to play. Uh, this all being said, I think if there's any player that's not going to play tomorrow in Winnipeg, it, it might be Patterson, man, straight up. I, I, I'm I'm starting to believe that he is banged up. Yeah, and uh, again, I already uh, gave Patrick Johnson some flowers once, but the province Patrick Johnson reported this a couple weeks ago. We did mention it on the show, but he reported that Patterson is dealing with a groin injury, it's believed. Wow. Um, so... 
yeah, he's obviously going through some stuff. He's had groin injuries before. So, yeah, I would say it's a tough one, man, because I think in the last game of the regular season, again, they've walked to the division. They still have a chance of winning the West, which depending on what Dallas does tonight. Um, but I think if there are some guys dealing with ailments um, that could use the rest, I think obviously Thursday is the time to do it. That being said, I, I don't really believe in necessarily resting the whole roster. You know, I, I don't like that the losers mentality of like, OK, let's just rest everyone and whatever happens, when it happens. I think I should still be gearing up for playoff hockey because, again, you don't know when you're playing necessarily. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. But again, tonight, Dallas plays St. Louis. And if Dallas loses that game, the Canucks still have a chance at finishing team. first overall in the Western Conference. So it's kind of crazy, Kyle. There's only yeah. 10 games left in the regular season. Uh, I think it's six tonight and four on Thursday. And the Canucks still have three potential playoff opponents, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, it's the Vegas Golden Knights, the LA Kings, and most likely going to be the Nashville Predators. Now, um, okay, so GV in the comments, can someone explain if there's a way we don't play Nashville at this point, or am I missing something? Well, you've come to the right place, buddy. Uh, let's yeah. look at the standings here. So if the Canucks do um, s uh, finish second overall in the conference, if they don't pass Dallas, they will play Nashville. Nashville is locked into the first wildcard spot. So if Vancouver stays second in the conference, if Dallas wins tonight, even if Dallas gets a point tonight against St. Louis, Vancouver will play Nashville. Now, if Vancouver passes the Dallas Stars, and again, that would mean Dallas loses to St. Louis tonight, Vancouver has to win in any fashion on Thursday against Winnipeg. They would finish first overall in the conference. And then if that happens, they could still play either Vegas or LA. So right Ooh. now, Vegas is in the, the, thir um, the third in the Pacific Division. They're going to play Edmonton right, or would play Edmonton right now. LA is in the second wildcard spot, eighth overall in the Western Conference. Now, if you want to look at probabilities, Vegas plays um, the Anaheim Ducks ahead of uh, for their final game of the regular season, and LA plays the Chicago Blackhawks. So, what's most likely, obviously, is that you know both those teams win their games. Vegas plays Edmonton, and the Kings finish you know in that second wildcard spot. So. At this point, Vegas is the least likely opponent for your Vancouver Canucks. Um, Nashville is the most likely, but it goes Nashville, then LA, then Vegas. That's that's the probability. Wow, right dude. Thanks for the math, man. You're such a smart guy. <laughs> it's, again, really, really fascinating that, again, on the last two days of the regular season, the Canucks could face three teams. It's some powerful stuff, and there's also this uh, predicament where some fans are literally scared. Like they're pooping their pants. They are praying that we don't play Vegas or Los Angeles. And I hope you are listening to this. I hope you really soaked in what we said in the first 20 minutes of this episode. Don't worry. Don't stress out. Yes, the Vancouver Canucks are very skilled and all this jazz. Yeah, they're a little inexperienced. But something tells me that their team toughness is going to be able to bridge that gap. And also the noise of Rogers Arena. I think it'll allow this team to feel another way and ultimately raise the ceiling of this team. In other words, <laughs> we're going to be fine. Bring on anyone. Bring on anyone. Now, I will say this, though. Let's let's talk about this because it's fun, right? There is a world where the Vancouver Canucks play Nashville and Dallas plays Los Angeles and Edmonton plays Las Vegas and Colorado plays Winnipeg. And you start saying that out loud and you're like, oh, I get why people don't want to play those other two teams. <laughs> Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, and no, we got to be honest. Every day is no. I was saying that I, I wanted Vegas. Um, I said that a couple weeks ago when we were talking about potential playoff oppo opponents. And it wasn't so much that Vegas can be an easy out or anything. I don't think any of those teams are an easy out. But I want the story, man. Give me the story of, of Vancouver going against the defending Stanley Cup champs now. And that's the least likely scenario in that situation. But again, kind of size up the competition here. And I think we'll we'll end up talk, going a bit more in depth on this once the playoff opponent is known. Um, but interestingly enough, I think Nashville is a more high event team than the Vancouver Canucks. They're, they have more expected goals for and more expected goals against. Uh, I mentioned it before. They actually throw the body a lot, uh, much like the Vancouver Canucks. And they kind of have, you know, a good power play and a bad penalty kill. I, I say bad, but both penalty kills are bottom half of the league. So some similarities between Vancouver and Nashville. Now, LA and Vancouver are kind of similar in a way as well. They don't play the stylistically the same way, but both are very low event teams. The Canucks have some of the lowest shots on goal totals in the league, the lowest shots against total in the league as well, or uh, mm -hmm. one of the lowest shots against. And LA is very similar. So, um, and then you look at Vegas, and, and I think, you know, the thing with well, Vegas and Vancouver, I think both play good defensive hockey and both have a lot of star power. So there's kind of interesting parallels between all three opponents. But as you said, Kyle, 
I don't care who it is. Bring on whoever, baby. Let's go. Playoffs are around the corner. Bring on whoever, man. Straight up. Uh, can I bring this up again? I don't know if I'm talking out of my ass, but I really feel as if there's a new level to be unlocked for this team. There's a there's a version of the Vancouver Canucks with Lindholm and Pedersen playing at their potential where we see this team being twice the team they are right now. And there is a chance that the people, yes, the people on the West Coast, the best coast of Canada, who embrace that West Coast bias that we've been talking about since day one, right? I feel as if it's the people that will give them that juice because nobody in that organization has really heard Vancouver the way they should be heard. That's just the truth. The, the playoffs, literally around the corner, I cannot wait for the boys in blue and green or black and yellow and red to once again embrace and soak in what the city is actually all about okay on the other side we'll talk more about some individual stuff that doesn't really matter but it kind of does matter okay for real trophy watch is is coming up uh, does quinn hughes have to play on thursday if you know kale mccarr is a threat to take the scoring title away from him when it comes to defensemen uh, again we'll talk about that on the other side uh begsy who we shouting out here on locked on canucks all right. Hey, welcome to a, a new sponsor to the Locked On family. It's Monopoly Go, baby. I've been told I'm a competitive person. Kyle, do you think that's true? I think so, man. You are. You Kyle, are. Definitely, thanks, buddy. Man. That's, I feel bad for your children. Ball, yeah, ball hockey is bringing it out of me in the worst way, too. Um, you know, I do have a competitive side, and we all do. My competitive side is that I'm a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great twist on Monopoly where you play not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations, build up amazing cities that bring you the big money. But the best part is messing with my friends, okay? Nothing love more than messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties just like on Classic Monopoly. I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself. <laughs> And the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments and earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Boom, bam. Good morning. Yes, good morning, Vancouver. We doing this bright and early, talking about your Vancouver Canucks, Kyle Bound and Trevor Bags. Be mature, man. We come a long way again. 4.20 p.m. all those months ago, and now we're here at 8 a.m. That is uh, that is what the future holds, straight up. After every Canucks game, I can't promise you post-game shows on Locked On Canucks because of the studio usage and whatnot, but we will be here first thing in the morning, okay? For real. Uh, we're going to sleep on whatever happens during those playoff games and bring you this show. Hit the like button, subscribe for more and more and more and more and more and more. Uh, speaking of more and more, you guys just, you guys just commenting away straight up. Okay. I, I want to ask you a Trevor, uh, Trevor, a question. Okay. Right here. Look at this. Okay. Ryan Hernandez. It, was Hughes pissed off last night after the game? That again, comment comes from Ryan. Uh, you saw when he was talked to the crowd, fan appreciation night, all in all. Uh, this guy is such a stoic, such a competitor, never smiles, even though the Canucks accomplished so much this season. And uh, it just goes to show me that this guy's not done proving a point. You know what I'm saying? I think all season long, this guy has tried to prove a point straight up. Uh, he was so disrespected in a lot of uh, defenseman rankings uh, across the league. Remember, this guy was a tier seven player, according to the Athletic, going into the, into the regular season. Yeah. And look at what he's done. He's accomplished so much on the verge of winning a Norris and uh, on the verge of winning a scoring title in, in regards to being a defenseman. Now, Trevor, uh, let's say Kale McCarr, who is two points behind, does play in game 82 for Colorado against Edmonton. Do you think that pushes the Canucks to play Quinn Hughes? Because I feel as if the scoring title might mean something to him. Uh, yeah, maybe that's why he was pissed off last night. Although I'll, I'll say that, like you said, Kyle, I think Quinn Hughes... Seems like he's pissed off every time he's yeah. in front of a microphone. I get what <laughs> you're saying. His favorite thing to do. I think he, I think he wanted like at least a point last night. You know, he had a couple chances just to like get that three point cushion on McCarr. Because I feel as yeah. I feel as if if McCarr gets the scoring title and having played four less games or five less games, whatever whatever the number may be, 
a lot of those people who don't stay up and do their jobs and watch hockey, you know what I'm saying? On the West Coast, the best coast, are just going to immediately assume that Kale McCarr deserves the Norris again. Uh, I'll say this. If the Canucks are in a position to not have to win that game against Winnipeg, like they have nothing to play for, I know Quinn Hughes and maybe some other players may want to pad the stats, blah, 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 who knows. If that's the case, they shouldn't do it. Like, if there's nothing to play for, Quinn Hughes should not play against the Winnipeg Jets. It's just the truth. Yeah, like, who cares about these individual trophies? Who cares about the Norris? Who cares about the damn Norris, man? Go win the Conn Smythe. No, for real. Forget about the Norris. Shoot for the yeah. Conn Smythe. I, I agree, but I think that that should be a player decision as well. Wow. Uh, I think wow. Quinn, Quinn, Hughes is a, Quinn Hughes is a competitor. If he wants to play, let him play. I'm not saying. Okay. Like, if Quinn Hughes wants to play and you're going to scratch him, I think that causes more problems than just letting him play in the final game of the regular season. Look, this guy, he plays hockey for a living. That's what he's born and bred to do. Um, I, and I think, yeah, even if there's nothing to play for, if he wants to play the game, go let him play the game. That being said, he's probably going to play 31 nights a minute in the, uh, tw- 31 minutes a night in the playoffs, but uh, – no, I think he can do it, man. The guy's unbelievable. Even, uh, you know, if, if you're into any physical activity, you realize what this guy does when he pinches in the offensive zone and then always, always, always gets back to that is so hard to do. Uh, the guy is just absolutely not only one of the best defensemen in the NHL or the best defenseman in the NHL, but once he's one of the best athletes in general, man. This guy is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, he's phenomenal, man. Uh, just what a season. Uh, what a what an athlete, again, like you mentioned, in. And- he brings so much to the table, and even though he's put up 91 points in 81 games and we think we've, we've seen the best from Quinn Hughes, again, his stoic demeanor and his competitive nature that we see uh, in all these post-game interviews goes to show you that with him getting an increase in minutes as well in the Stanley Cup playoffs, that, you know, Vancouver Canucks fans and the organization has has not seen anything yet. I do believe there's a, another gear to Quinn Hughes, and yeah, not to pump our tires too much. Remember uh, seven months ago when we did drop that episode, the Canucks are going to win the Stanley cup. You and I both mentioned that like if the Canucks are going to take the next step, we have to believe that even though Quinn Hughes entering the season was already at like 93 overall, 94 overall, that there was another level to his game. And we both agreed that there was, and we saw that this season. Now I'm here saying that there's now another level to his game post regular season of this season. Am, Am I crazy? Because I don't think I am. I think with six or seven more minutes a game, we're about to see a whole lot more from Quinn Hughes and what he can do for the Vancouver Canucks. No, I think, uh, again, this season, it sounds weird to say, it's probably a scratch on the surface. I, I do think we'll see another level of Quinn Hughes in the playoffs. I think there's another level in terms of what this power play can do. I also think when he, just by the fact he's going to be out there probably four minutes more per game, uh, you're going to see more heroics from Quinn Hughes just because of that as well. Look, mm-hmm. we saw it. Rookie, uh, the big, the big long stretch pass to Bo Horvat, mm-hmm. uh, to the playoff OT winner against St. Louis. Like, there's going to be some Quinn Hughes moments, and I can't wait for it. And you know, we're going to have it all for you, covering it, breaking it down here on Locked On Canucks. You're Canucks every day, Kyle. Man, oh man, I am so glad that we took on this job. Uh, when we uh got asked to do it uh, a little over a year ago, I did not think we'd be in the running for the Stanley Cup by now, but uh. Dude, we're the good luck charms, man. That's what happens when you put a Hindu and a white guy together to talk about the Canucks, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> straight up, man. It is what it is. Straight up. Okay, last question. We got to go to the comments. And remember, we're going to be in the mornings every morning from now on. Uh, maybe in the afternoon when I have time, I'll get back on the live stream just to answer questions, okay? Because the comments really, really, really matter. Uh, we'll answer this question and then end things off. I'll let Begsy answer it. Who do you think will be the surprise hero in the Stanley Cup playoffs my name is kyle bowen again hit the like button and subscribe i'm gonna sign out join the discord link in the bio begsy answer the question man it's uh there's a lot of options on these vancouver canucks right now i'm gonna go with elias lindholm um, <laughs> because i don't think i think a lot of people are sleeping on what this guy can do uh again former selkie nominee 40 goal score <laughs> he's got it in him to be a great player in this league I also think of guys like garland and joshua huglander i don't know if people will be too surprised by that because they've been good all season long but Elias Lindholm breaking out and being a star for the Canucks in the playoffs, I think would be a bit of a bit of a surprise. But yeah, of I the like candidates to, to surprise, I think he's certainly got it in him. Um, but yeah, Kyle, shout out to you for getting up early and doing this. Uh, again, yeah. we will try to aim for the morning show around kind of. No, I got home at two a.m. I got home at two a.m. last night. Well, no, no, I went to bed at two a.m. Sorry, but crazy, I'm, I'm committed, man. I'm committed, man. Sorry to cut you off, man. One love. 
You're crazy. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, again, may, we might have to do a noon recording if, uh, you know, you sleep in or my, my kids are causing chaos oh. in the morning, but let's, let's aim for the morning records, man. I like it. I like it. One love, man. One love again, locked on Canucks, uh, Trevor bags, uh, uh, say everything you got to say on the script and uh, sign us out, okay? All right. Shout out to uh, everyone listening to Locked On Canucks, whether you're an everyday or an occasional listener, a first time listener, a new subscriber, or you join us here on the live YouTube show. We love each and every one of you. Locked On Canucks, it's nothing without you, baby. And hey, this show wouldn't be the same if the Canucks weren't winning some games. Again, we'll be Facts. breaking it all down <laughs> for you. Um, we're going to be sizing up the opposition once we know. We could even know later tonight who the Canucks are playing in round one. I also want to start chirping the rest of the Western Conference teams in terms of why they won't win the Cup. Uh, hey. That and so much more coming up on the channel. Uh, but for now, we got to get out of here. I'm Trevor Banks. That guy's Kyle Bowen. And you've been listening to Locked On Canucks. Peace. You're Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks, part of the Locked On Podcast.